Okay, I took the time to educate myself on Edge AI so that I can have a reasonable understanding on what Brainship actually does. So this video is all my findings on Brainship and towards the end of this video, I'll make an educated observation on whether they are worth your time. Now full disclosure, I don't have a position in this company and because I'm not trained as an electrical engineer, there are bound to be things I'm going to miss. And if there are anything I missed, let me know in the comment section below and that way the community can learn as well. As usual, as a random shaved head Asian dude on the internet, I'm not a professional. So please don't use this video as financial advice. But if you do learn something new, consider gently smashing that like button right there and that will mean the world to me. So without further ado, let's go. I asked myself three questions when I do preliminary research on growth stocks. Now the first one is, how does the company make money? The second question is, do their financials indicate that the company is on the right path? They don't necessarily have to make net profits, but I do want to see the revenue going in the right direction so that I am building confidence in my investment story. Now, the third one is, can the caliber of management carry out their plan successfully and attract talent? Now, I'll talk more about these individually in just a second, but if I can answer all three questions with simplicity and also a positive outlook, then I'll do more research on them and decide whether I should consider investing. I've left timestamps in the description box below, so feel free to jump to a section that interests you the most. Now, the first question is, how does Brainship make money? And in order to understand how they make money, it'll be worthwhile for us to at least dig into the product and underlying technologies just so that we can get an understanding of who their customers could be and how they can potentially generate revenue in the future. Now, Brainship's core product is Akita. Akita is an event-based neural processor that's built for edge AI applications. That's a lot of buzzwords, so let me explain. Now, event-based means that Akita will only process inputs that meets a certain threshold. If it doesn't meet the threshold, there'll be no processing done. Now, Edge AI means that instead of the data being sent to the cloud, processed, and then the insights being sent back into the application, everything is done locally and the data is only sent to the cloud for storage. Since Akita only processes inputs that meet a certain threshold, aka events, it consumes a lot less power and together with the ability to run neural networks on the hardware, this makes it a great fit for workloads that is time sensitive and also with a power constraint. So think about surveillance cameras. Now, another good example of a use case for Brainship is autonomous vehicles. Autonomous driving require you to send camera or LiDAR data to the cloud for processing, plan a set of tasks based on the data being sent, and then perform those tasks locally in the car. As you can imagine, if there's a delay between the data being sent to the cloud to be processed and then the set of tasks being sent back into the car to be performed, that could be a fatal mistake on the highway. Having computation done locally in the hardware will solve a slice of that problem. Now for your sanity's sake, I won't talk about the architecture of the chip. But if you do want to challenge yourself, I have left links in the description box below that actually describes the architecture. And if you are interested to dig into Brainship's underlying technologies, I will suggest you to read more into spiking neural networks and the von Neumann bottlenecks. Okay, let's move forward. Given what I just said is the simplest way to understand Akita's underlying technology, Brainship has said that they generate revenue either by licensing their intellectual property or directly selling Akita as a neural processor system on chip. Now, according to an article that was written by MarketWatch, that's also on the Brainchip website, they have indicated that the neuromorphic chip market was valued at $111 million in 2019 and expected to grow to $366 million by 2025. That is incredibly small. And I believe one of the main reasons why it's so small is because neuromorphic chips are built specifically for spiking neural networks. Spikes are essentially how our neurons communicate. And that really is the inspiration for event-based processing that Akita is essentially built on. But according to COO Roger Levinson, although Akita is built with inspiration from how our brain process information, it can process traditional neural networks as well. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that Akita is more general purpose based and it's better to look at the edge AI market instead of focusing on the neuromorphic chip market. And McKinsey in 2018 have said that edge AI hardware is expected to grow to a 5 billion market by 2025. 
and Deloitte in 2019 documented that their edge AI chip industry is poised to grow 20% compounded annually. Now, the growth of the industry is certainly there, but does Brainship have enough firepower to compete on a global scale? Yes, Intel and IBM are competing for market share, but these are dinosaurs. The real threat is Nvidia, and especially after they just announced they acquire ARM Holdings in a 40 billion acquisition to accelerate their capabilities in edge AI. For your information, companies like Qualcomm and Apple all use ARM chips, and ARM Holdings released a new neural processing unit design with the same value proposition as Brainchip to cater for IoT devices. So my question to you is, what do you think? Do you think Brainchip have a chance against companies already with a massive existing customer base? Now, the second question I like to ask myself is, what are their financials looking like? Does it look like they're on the right path towards growth over the long term? With early stage companies, it's absolutely fine not to make a net profit, but a growing trajectory of revenue gives me confidence that there are customers buying that product. Now from 2017 to 2019, Brainship had a proof of concept done with Gaming Partners International and was selected by Quantum Corp in the US to provide AI powered object search and facial recognition technologies. Not to mention there were licensing deals with French law enforcement and Homeland Security Agency. And revenue growth looked really healthy up to the point of December 31st, 2018. But for the 2019 financial year, Brainship's revenue have declined substantially. And Brainship do have a financial year ending on the 31st of December every single year. Now, I do need to mention this as well, but on the 30th of June, 2020, which is Brainship's half yearly report, they reported $13,000 over a six month period. This is $13,000 for a 700 million market cap company. Now, of course, the pandemic might have impacted their ability to generate revenue over that six months. But my question is, what caused the decline from 2018 to 2019? I tried digging deep for it, but I couldn't find anything useful other than a legal dispute between Brainship and a company in New York. Now, if you have any more information about the decline, I would love to know and make sure you talk to me in the comment section below because I am very curious. But it's not all bad. In 2020, Brainship have announced research partnership with Ford Motor Company, Magic Eye, Valio, and Virago, which has shown that there are certainly interest in Brainship's underlying technology but interest doesn't mean that dollar bills are coming in. I personally will remain conservative until the money hits the bank account. That philosophy has kept me grounded when I led a growth team for a VC funded startup. So that's more of a personal preference on my side. For the remainder of the year, we know that Brainship have $5.3 million worth of cash as of 30th of June, 2020, and have an agreement with LDA Capital to draw up to $29 million in exchange for unlisted options. So they should have enough money to last another one to two years. And this is the true test for their ability to commercialize the technology and win market share. Now, the last question I like to ask myself is, can the caliber of management win market share and talent? Now, this is going to be subjective based on your own experience. And personally speaking, I make observations based on the current company track record, and also the founders or the CEO's previous professional experience. I'll be focusing on Peter and Lewis, both the CEO and the founder CTO for the company. And I'll talk about the talent point in just a second. If you've been following the Brainship story, then you know that Peter is the founder CTO for the company. He was previously the chief scientist for IBM with numerous patents under his name on Brainship's underlying technology. Lewis has deep semiconductor experience from both Exa and also Conexent. Both companies have been bought out since then. If you haven't noticed, Lewis was a director in Quantum, so that may have contributed to Brainchip's work with Quantum. Now it's good that both key members in the management team have deep experience in semiconductors, but can they convince a top tier engineer to work for them instead of working for another big company or a very well-known startup? To tell you the truth, I think that will be easier for Brainship to attract talent if they can prove that they can commercialize Akita. But as it stands, I think they're gonna have a very tough time attracting talent as they're fighting against some of the top tier tech companies in the world. Adding a Nobel laureate will definitely help when it comes to attraction. 
but he sits on the advisory board. So the talent might not get a chance to work with them on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm just saying that commercialization of Akita will certainly help attracting even better talent into the team. So let me conclude. Brainship is currently focusing on commercializing Akita and it plans to generate revenue either by licensing out their intellectual property or selling Akita as a neural processor system on chip. Frankly speaking, I am discouraged by their financials. Not because it declined substantially, but because I don't understand why they declined so much from 2018 to 2019. There are certainly promising developments on the partnership side, but again, it's my personal philosophy to be a little bit more conservative until they can prove that those partnerships can be monetized. And because of the financials and where the company is at with their current technology, I don't know if that's enough to convince top tier engineers to join the team and take a chance on Brainship. So as it stands, my story in Brainship is incredibly weak. And I won't consider going further until I can see that Brainship is starting to commercialize their technology and those dollar bills are hitting their bank account. Now, I know some of you are massive fans of Brainship and I would love for you to help me understand your optimism on Brainship and their underlying technology. Am I missing something here? And am I overly pessimistic with this company? On a separate note, if you wanna read my research, be part of my fortnightly Q and A's, and not to mention some additional content pieces that I create for my patrons, consider supporting this channel via Patreon. Nonetheless, it already means the world to me that you're watching this video all the way to the end. So if you learned something brand new, just make sure you gently smash that like button right there, subscribe to my channel, click onto the bell, so that when I release future videos, you be the first one to know. Until next time, Otto will always do the honors and see you very, very soon.